This is episode two of the Online Learning Podcast. Are you making the most of the person you can be? Online learning is your gateway to expanding your horizons in a direction you may not even have thought of. Hello, I'm John Colley. Here on the Online Learning Podcast, we challenge you to find the online learning courses to take you to your next level. Expert in something? Why not create your own course and monetize that expertise? Come on, open this door with me and step inside the Online Learning Podcast. Welcome to the first full episode of the Online Learning Podcast. Today we've got a fabulous interview lined up with Jerry Kirk, but to start off we're going to go straight into this week's Marketing Tip of the Week. And now the Online Learning Podcast's Marketing Tip of the Week. This is one really designed for course creators, but if you've got any sort of online content you can use it too. And my tip is a very simple one. If you've got uh, an online course, then um, you should put a link to this and a little comment about it in your email signature on all your emails. So every time you send an email out to somebody, whether it's from your iPhone or from your iPad or from your laptop or your desktop, then they get a little reminder that you've got this great course on offer. Uh, and if you want to, you can include with that a some sort of special discount code or coupon code to make it even more attractive. Clearly, if you've got a free course, then that's even more attractive too. Um, you can mix these up. You can have, uh, if you've got more than one course, you can have one on your laptop and a different one on your iPad or whatever, so people get a mixed message rather than a great big huge chunk of like 20 courses at the bottom because uh, that's too many to choose from. So I'd recommend just having one or two, um, but having your course uh, details, of, you know, like only a couple of lines uh, saying what the course is, perhaps one benefit and a link to it, uh, it might be a way to spread the message and to get more students. So that's it. This week's marketing tip is to put a link to your Udemy course or your online learning course uh, in your email signature blog. Now we can move right into our interview with somebody who has created a course and who is going to talk to us all about it. And this week we're talking to Jerry Kirk. So let's crack on. And now it's time for this week's Course Creator Interview. I'm really delighted to be able to introduce you to Jerry Kirk, who is somebody who I met through the Facebook groups uh, for Udemy. And Jerry has very kindly agreed to come on and uh, talk about uh, what he's been doing in the way of course creation and uh, the course that, uh, that he's made. So, Jerry, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, John. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I suppose the first question, just to, to sort of set the scene, is perhaps you can explain a little bit about um, who you are and what do you do? Well, I'm, I'm based in Canada. And my background is primarily in uh, IT. And I do a lot of work with teams, with organizations and individuals, helping them get more results out of their efforts. So what that means really is looking at improving the way that they do their work, the way that they collaborate, and, and really stay on top of all of the competing demands that we have of our time so that they can really create the results that they want to have. And, and how, how did you how did you get into creating courses? Because I, I think in the in the pre chat we had, you said you actually um, first found Udemy when it was was really quite nascent and quite an early stage. Yes, yeah, I discovered it really early on and, and was kind of in, intrigued by it. So I, I created a, a course in, in the early days when really there wasn't a lot of attention on the platform, just as kind of an experiment and. Um, and because I was also finding a lot of people were wanting to learn from a lot of things that I knew. So so I created a, a quick course on it, didn't really do much with it, didn't really promote it. Um, and then uh, most recently created a second course um, on the the platform today where it's, you know, it's got a lot more traction, it's got a lot more features and whatnot, and, and certainly a lot more potential 
um, as a instructor to to reach a big audience. Perhaps we perhaps we can turn to that course because, um, as you know, the, the format of this is that we we try to concentrate down on one course, our spotlight course for today. So, which what's the name of the course that we're spotlighting that that, that you've created? <sighs> Well, the, the title really speaks to one of the dilemmas that most of us face on a daily basis, and it's called How to Stop Doing Busy Work, How to Do Your Best Work. So it's, you know, we all face a lot of challenge. We often feel a little overwhelmed with our, our lifestyles and, you know, some frustration really not getting to the things that matter to us. It seems like... We only get to the things that, you know, we have to get done, but um, don't really create the value that we're looking for in our lives. So, so that's what the course is really all about. Is it's helping us shift to not only getting things done, but getting the things that we really want to do, uh, making time for them too. It sounds definitely like I should be taking the course. I can assure you, with the piles of paper I've got spread around my desk at the moment. Um, can you just go into a little bit more about how the course is structured and and the the way you lead people through this process? I'm really thinking about somebody who's who's thinking they might might be interested and might benefit from the course. As to you know what to expect when they they come to the course page. Sure. Well, first off, we look at you know what. What are the challenges with managing work in, in today's world and, and how the tools that we've relied on, whether it's to-do lists or you know, an Outlook uh, task manager, calendars, how those things just really don't keep up with today's busy lifestyles. You know, the thing that's changed now is a lot of our work is intangible. Right, we can't touch it, we can't feel it. It's through a computer. It's it's it, it doesn't have a shape or a form like you know, see someone who's a, a carpenter, you can actually see see what he's doing and, and see that that inventory of things that he's working on. So the first part of the course really looks at um, how our brain processes work, and and recognizes that um, we're f- far more effective at seeing things visually. Than we are just through um, through words, for example, and that's why um, to do lists don't really give us a lot of feedback. Um, so it gets into the power of visualization, which is the first rule of the system called personal kanban, to to visualize our work, and then through that we get a lot more insight and can reduce our anxiety by really being able to see things um, truly for what they are, um, whether it's the kind of work that we're doing, the kind of work that we're ignoring, what's the current state of it, kind of creating like a real-time dashboard. And then and then we get into some of that, well, how are we going to create our own system? And what's really great about um, personal Kanban is it molds who you are. You know, there's a lot of systems out there that are kind of complicated or have a bunch of rules and, you know, just you have to, you have to kind of twist and contort your body to kind of fit into their structure. Whereas with personal Kanban, each system I find is is unique. And so we show you the different ways that you can shape and mold your own system, which makes it more fun, right? You can put your own creativity into it. You can um, add your own um, flavor to it. Once you really created your your initial system, just that alone will give you a ton of value. And then um, beyond that, when you feel ready, you can go deeper into the course and kind of, you know, add a lot more um, deeper insight into uh, the nature of your work by adding different ways to prioritize work, looking at balancing flow, right? One of the killers to our time is trying, trying to juggle too many balls at one time, kind of that, that you know, uh, we, we're good at starting but often lousy at finishing. Yeah, well, my, my wife tells yeah. me I can't multitask. I don't believe her, of course, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Well, science will tell you that you can't multitask either. Actually, what we do is we context switch, right? So we move from one thing to the other. But the problem is we lose a lot of overhead when we do that. And our brains actually um, crave closure. So there's something called the Zagarnik effect. And what that says is I may be focused on this task here, but all the other tasks that I haven't gotten completed, my brain is still processing them. So... I can't fully concentrate on this thing because my brain is still paying attention to all those other things. So my, my level of focus is down, my level of quality is down, and of course then my level of productivity is down. And so what that does is then, you know, that creates more pressure to get things done, which then puts more 
creates more issues around qualitivity and productivity, and it's kind of this downward spiral. Yeah, I mean, I, so, I, I get driven nuts when I have to sort of butterfly between one thing and another. I find it the most intensely frustrating thing, you know, that I, I'm trying to concentrate on one thing and other things demand my attention. Exactly. And, and then after a while with this frustration, you know, we get so desperate in a way to, to complete anything. And so what happens now is all those 10 minute tasks that really aren't that valuable or that important, all of a sudden leapfrog ahead of those bigger, noble, uh, more valuable um, pieces of work just because we can have the satisfaction of getting them done. So we kind of sabotage our, our efforts by not getting things done, we just start grabbing anything that we can do to, to feel a sense of, of accomplishment. Mm. Yeah. So, so what uh, a visual system will do is it'll it'll reflect that back to us, right? It'll show us where we're spending our time, and it'll also help us to see how many of those balls that we're juggling. And by applying the second rule of personal Kanban, which is about limiting work in progress, we can um, you know help ourselves make better choices to recognize, oh, I better not start this thing until I've gotten that thing done. And that's really where we start to find our, our flow and really hit a, a higher gear. Kind of much like traffic. You know, yeah. you think about traffic on the highway, you know, busy hours, anything, or rush hours, anything but but rushing because, you know, we're all in gridlock. <laughs> um, because, you know, while while our system is capable of, of handling that many things, you know, the ability to get anything done in that environment is next to nil. Yeah, yeah. So for all of us, you know, what we have to do is find our optimal flow. What's the right amount of cars on our personal highway that will allow us to reach our peak performance? And so what I like about the system that we teach in the course is it's not just about getting things done, but it's about helping you learn more about yourself, which makes it exciting. It's kind of a process of discovery week by week. And is this something you just do on a piece, of, piece of, paper of paper or something, or do you have to have a, a, some special software or something? Well, there's, there's either approach, and I always recommend where possible to, to use the, the, the physical paper approach, which sounds kind of ironic in today's uh, tech-driven world and myself being in the IT industry um, that's certainly uh, kind of ironic, but but even um, software teams doing uh, really elaborate projects, they will often use a whiteboard or a um, some other physical system to manage their work because the thing is, when you've got a wall where you can put post-its up, for instance, you can really see things very clearly, right? Mm -hmm. in, a, in a on a small monitor, you know, you lose a lot of that visibility, and visibility is one of the key aspects of the system. Yeah. Now that being said, I'm I'm a I'm a consultant. I travel around. I'm not in one place all the time, so I use a I use a digital system myself. And um, for a lot of us, whether we're uh, working with a team that's spread around the world, or you know we just happen to need something always on the go, then you know a digital system is the way to go for us. And there's lots of tools out there you can you can choose from, and most of them have a, a free version for personal use. Um, mm -hmm. They're really going after um, you know teams and large organizations for but, but, for their paid some, stuff. Somebody taking your course doesn't need to rush off and get some expensive piece of software. They can just do it. Uh, they can just do it at home. Absolutely, and in fact, a, a lot of the people taking the course, I mean, I invite them to post their boards up as they create them, so we can, right. we can get feedback from them. Mm -hmm. We can you know, learn from each other. So there's lots of examples already in the course. And most people are doing a, um, a paper system. The thing with paper, too, is, and I talk about this in the course, there's a couple lectures on, you know, should I go digital or should I go physical? The thing with a physical board is it's really easy to change. You're not fighting with the tool. You're not dealing with tool limitations. You know, it's very easy to to add other columns or other colors of post-its. And so these, are, so these are some of the elements of a, of a visual system, right? You, it's It's... Um, it's very malleable when you're using a, a physical system. So when you're in the early stages, you're really just experimenting, trying to find um, what works for you. And I guarantee people will make lots of adjustments in the beginning as they start to see what's more effective for them. Yeah, that sounds absolutely fascinating. I mean, who would, I'm really trying to think now, who would this course benefit most? Have you got a sort of an ideal um, student or is it, is it really something for anybody? <laughs> I can't think of too many people that that wouldn't benefit from this course, and and I've I can say I've I've taught it to such a different range of people. I mean, obviously in in the corporate world, 
I have a real heart for, for managers, right? They're often those teams of one that have things coming from them from all different directions. So I think a system like this will be um, uh, transformative, really. And that's, that's some of the feedback that I've gotten from people. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're someone like me who's an independent consultant, um, it's, it's also, again, a fantastic way to, to manage your work, an entrepreneur, but even, um, even someone at home, uh, like a lot of people who use the course, they also use it in their, in their, um, life at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my kids and my wife and I, we all use a, a personal Kanban system. So it's the type of system that, you know, kind of pays you twice. It's, it's not just for your, your professional life, but also for your, your, your life at home as well. You must have the most amazingly well-organized house. I know my wife's continually telling me that I haven't done what was on the list that she hadn't yet written, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, it's funny you should say that. I mean, when we, when we first started at home, it wasn't, and it wasn't like getting all geeky in my wife and saying, hey, you know, we should do a personal combine system because, yeah. you know, that wouldn't have gotten too far. <laughs> But it came out of a real need, and, and oftentimes that's that's why we, we try things. So in our case, we were having that same kind of expectations issues, right? There was these assumptions or expectations, and they weren't being met, and we weren't necessarily always getting the things done we wanted to do. And so I said, well, you know, why don't we try and um, use a, a Kanban board, which, you know, in its basic form is really simple. It's three columns. You have a list of things in a to-do column. You have a list of things that are in progress. And you have things that, that get to done. And so what we just started to do was, you know, create a very basic system, put things up on Post-its. And uh, once, a, once a day, at the end of the day, we would kind of check in, update our boards, talk about things. And it was amazing how much just that little system um, helped us. And, you know, we've done a lot more since then. We, we now use it um, in, in all kinds of situations, even just planning trips. Um, but we also use it um, to deal with the big rocks in our lives. We have a, like a portfolio board, if you will. And we, we try to make sure that, you know, the, the busyness of the day-to-day doesn't crowd out the, the things that were really important to us as well. So, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that can develop with you as you mature in your own ability to, to manage your work. Yeah, no, it's, it sounds it sounds absolutely inspiring. I think I'd be tempted to sneak down in the middle of the night and take post-its off my to-do bit and put them onto my wife's to-do bit, and then pretend I'd be thinking <laughs> about it in the morning. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure I wouldn't get away with that for very long. Um, right. B- before, I mean, this 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 sounds like an absolutely b- brilliant course. Before we 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 talk about the the discount that you've got for the. Um, for the the community here, um, I I just like to turn to um, course creators because I I like to ask my interviewees um, you know a little bit about their experience of creating their course and particularly if they've got a tip that they could share with other course creators to to learn really from your experience. Absolutely, I, I've definitely learned a lot of things along the way. Some some things the hard way, some things um, through my own um, work experience. And one of the things that I really strongly recommend is to get feedback early and often. So that could be as simple as, and this was a painful one for me, was when you're doing your recording and you you think you've got your equipment all set up just right and, and everything's going to be smooth. You know, still do that first recording, you know, that's a few minutes long or whatever, you know, play it back, make sure everything's okay before you invest a lot more time. Because what happened for me was I actually went into a recording studio, you know, I'm dealing with professionals and I'm thinking everything's good. And we find out a few hours later, actually, that the the audio volume was really low. And so that just meant a whole lot of post-processing and didn't really, you know, give me the quality I was looking for. Udemy has a fantastic Facebook group where you can post your, your first video and, and there's tons of great feedback on that. And another example that I'll give you that I don't think anyone else has done on, on Udemy that I, I was great for me is I actually, before I even created the course, I wanted to test the demand for it. So I did some online promotion to um, create a private group that would journey with me as I created the course and I actually charged for this, so I, I, I earned money um, in making the course before it was started. That's genius. And in return for that, so in, in return for that, I um, I offered them kind of a concierge service. So I mean, uh, most people taking the course, it's more of a self-paced approach with you know some live support and, and question and answer. Well, in this case, 
um, I really held their hand and walked them through each of the stages of developing their own system. We had group sessions. And what was great about that is I got tons of feedback as I was building the course in terms of what topics I should be presenting, the quality of, of what I was, the material I was putting together, and, and really getting better insights into how to teach it effectively. So it was really a win-win. I got paid for it. They got tons of value. And um, I ended up with a much better course for the public when it came time to launch it publicly. I think that's astonishingly brilliant. I think absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's one of the sort of principles of the sort of the lean startup, which is you get validation, and ideally you get um, your would-be customers to pay for your product development, you know, en route. So um, I think I think that's absolutely brilliant, and, and you know, I have to think about how I can do that for my courses. I think that's really really great. Um, thank you for that, Jay. Can we just now let's just turn to this uh, the discount. One of the the, the whole purposes of um, the online learning podcast is to extract. Uh, extraordinary discounts from uh, my interviewees so that the uh, the community here can um, rush over having been motivated and excited by hearing you talk about your course and having a chance to get to know you a little bit by listening to you what, what you have to say um, that you're going to share a discount coupon with us exclusively for the online learning podcast community um, and uh, we'll make that available um, through the show notes, although you'll be able to just go to Udemy and plug it in if you want to. So could you explain uh, what you've got for us today? Well, John, you've, 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 uh, you've arm-ruffled arm me down to, uh, to give a really good, good offering here. And, you know, for me, the, the whole point of, of the Udemy platform is to make available what I've been doing with with clients um, in person and to make it really accessible to to anyone at, at home whatever your situation is so i really want to offer it in, in a way that um, people find enough uh, value from it and and can just jump in and and, and get at it so uh, yes yeah, so normally the course runs for for 97 dollars, which in and of itself is um, far less than what i charge in in in-person workshops um, but for for the uh, the online learning podcast community, um, I'm delighted to to offer for for twenty seven dollars um, using the the coupon provided. Brilliant. And um, what what coupon code are we going to use for this? So it's uh, OLP GK twenty seven. Okay. Well, you can punch, punch that in uh, to uh, my uh, page on uh, Udemy. You can uh, you can apply it there, or probably the easier thing is just to click on it in the uh, in the show notes. Yeah, I'll 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 put a pretty link in the show notes, which will be uh, something as straightforward as um, jbdcolleague dot com forward slash olpgk twenty seven, and that's Oscar Lima Papa, obviously for online learning podcast. Uh, GK is for Jerry Kirk, and twenty seven is the amount of money. Uh, now, just a, a quick disclosure disclosure to keep myself on the right side of the Fed. Um, the um, this this uh, link and this this uh, coupon code is a, a um, an affiliate link, and so um, if you do buy the course, then um, I will benefit from it financially. You won't pay any more. Um, but it will go through the um, the affiliate system on Udemy. And if you do that, uh, both Jerry and I will be extremely grateful, and so will the Udemy people uh, in, a, in a slightly more modest way. So thank you for that. Um, how can people find you, Jerry? Um, you've got a website, I, I gather, which I think is probably the best place for people to go and uh, go and look you up. Absolutely. Yeah, you can find me at my name, jerrykirk.net. That's a Jerry with a G, K I R K dot net. And there you can learn more about um, what I do to help people move forward, whether it's at the personal team or at the organizational level. And you can find all my links to Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, Google Plus. And I'd love to I'd love to chat and connect with anyone who's got questions about uh, managing work, whether it's really the personal combine or just um, productivity and effectiveness in general. That's brilliant. And, of course, if people do, do take up the course, there's an excellent message system on Udemy for um, individual questions relating to the course. So that, that makes it very easy to communicate. Absolutely. And, and I do host on a monthly basis a, a live session as well. So it's a chance to really you know 
ask the questions you want in, a, in an interactive way. Brilliant. Joey, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you for being one of my early guests on the uh, the Online Learning Podcast. Um, I wish you all success with your course. I'm going to have to go and have a, a very serious look at taking this myself. Um, you know, I'm, am I, if, <laughs> if, if, if it transforms my life, you might actually um, earn my wife's gratitude as well. So th- thank you for your time today. It's been really great. And I look forward to speaking to you at, at, at you know, some point in the future. Thanks, John. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I have a feeling you're going to get it. You're going to get a gift from your wife uh, really shortly. <laughs> That's all the best. Talk, <laughs> t- talk to you soon. Thanks, Jerry. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. So my thanks to Jerry. Uh, that looks like a really interesting course, and I think I'm going to have to go and have a look at it myself. Now we move on to the segment of the course where we look at this week's free course recommendation. So I'm just going to transition across to that and tell you all about this week's free course. Let's take a look at this week's free course of the week. This week's free course is Everyday Mind Mastery by Tom Cassidy, which is a system to teach you how to get things done. And he calls it the 13 by 4 system. Essentially, he teaches you to pick 13 components which are important to achieving whatever goal you're trying to achieve, and then you focus on one thing at a time for a week, and then the following week you focus on the second thing. Now, this can be used both in business and personally, and Tom talks about also using it particularly successfully in the education sector. It's all about keeping incredibly focused to get results. Now, this free course, which is on Udemy, has been subscribed for by nearly 23,000 students. So who's the author? Well, Tom is an Oxford physicist, uh, an internationally published author and a thought engineer. And he's created a system for helping people crack the deepest issues of their lives. Self-worth, self-belief, goal achieving, feeling good, achieving sustainable health and deeply fulfilling relationships. He's combined the wisdom of hundreds of years of the study of global philosophies, human effectiveness, modern findings of behavioural science, recent breakthroughs in the understanding of brain physiology, and even the results of quantum mechanics, into a practical system for getting things done. Sounds really scary, doesn't it? But I've started taking the course, and I tell you, he makes it so straightforward. It takes the system of monotasking to a new level. It's a one thing at a time on steroids, if you like. And most of all, it requires minimum willpower to use. Now, the free course has over 35 lectures and over six and a half hours of content. And in the course, you will learn what the 13 times 4 system is, why it works so well, and how it can be used to master anything and everything. So that's it, this week's free course of the week recommendation, Everyday Mind Mastery by Tom Cassidy, and I will provide um, a link to the course on Udemy in the show notes, and that will be at jbdcolleague.com forward slash OLP002. So go over, take the course, and hopefully uh, learn something new today. And by the way, have you got any idea how difficult it is to say everyday mind mastery without uh, tripping up over your tongue. I had to do this in several takes. So that's it for the second episode of the online learning podcast. Don't forget you can find all the details of the show notes if you go to jbdcolleycom forward slash OLP. 002 and you'll find all the show notes there including the links to jerry's great course and just to remind you the coupon code olpgk29 so that's it for another episode of the online learning podcast i really appreciate you being with me if you enjoyed the show i would really appreciate it if you would go over to itunes and leave me a rating preferably a five star rating if you think it's worth it and a comment and then if you email me john at jbdcolly.com that's julia brava delta collie.com i will send you a free coupon code to my udemy course an introduction to startups which has got 40 minutes of video teaching you all about startups so thank you very much for spending time with me today and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode this has been the online learning podcast <laughs>